بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope that you all are doing well are staying safe and healthy إن شاء الله On behalf of young Muslims I'd like to welcome you all to our online symposium titled Alone with Allah سبحانه وتعالى My name is Zirwazi Amir and I will be serving as your moderator for tonight. I am a Young Muslims member from the New Hyde Park chapter in New York. Um, I'm currently in my second year of optometry school. I've been involved in YM for about seven years and currently help in the national expansion team. And I am very excited for everyone to join us for our first session tonight. Um, before we start, I want to give a brief introduction about Young Muslims. Young Muslims is a division of ICNA. We are a national youth organization with chapters all across the country, from the East Coast from the West, and to the West Coast. Um, our goal as an organization is to create a safe and supportive environment for our youth. Every year, some of our members work together to hold an annual Young Muslims conference in conjunction with the ICNA convention. Although we weren't able to physically meet due to our current health situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to continue to spread the knowledge of the deen through this online medium. Um, indeed, you know, we plan, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of all planners. And alhamdulillah, we are still able to benefit through this platform. So I want to give a little quick note on how the format of this session is going to be. At the end of each talk, we will be having a small Q&A with each speaker. So please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A section or the live comment section. And inshallah, we'll keep an eye out for your questions and have the speaker address them. So with that, we are going to move on to our first session, our first talk titled Disconnect to Reconnect, where we will be discussing how we can motivate and mentally prepare ourselves for this upcoming Ramadan. We'll be having Dr. Suzy Ismail um, present this talk. Dr. Suzy is currently a visiting professor at DeVry University in New in North Brunswick, New Jersey, and DeVry University Online. She's also the curriculum developer and lead instructor at CML, which is a nonprofit social platform that focuses on strengthening marriage, family, and community life. She specializes in presenting a range of communication seminars and workshop at major corporations, conferences, and events that address really important topics like marriage, divorce, unity, youth and women empowerment, and cultural and religious diversity in the workforce. Since 1999, Dr. Susie has been teaching, speaking, and writing professionally on a national and international level. So with that, I'd like to invite Dr. Susie to start off our session for tonight. Jazakumullah okay. khair. Thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this. Um, it's uh, definitely a little bit different than our usual uh, ikna evening sessions. Um, but uh, alhamdulillah, it's it's again an honor and a pleasure to be able to uh, be a part of the ICNA program. So a'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli. So for everyone who has signed in, everyone who has joined the forum, and for those who will be joining, inshallah, as we continue, um, I know that things are different. I know that for many of us, you know, we look forward to ICNA weekend. I know my own family, my own children plan throughout the year for ICNA weekend, for friends that they're going to meet up with from different parts of the U.S., um, you know, connecting with with all the uh, acquaintances, uh, people that they enjoy hanging out with, going to the bazaar. So think are different and I think as we're adjusting to our new normal um, for many of us it's it's we're learning uh, a lot about ourselves we're learning a lot about each other our family members we're learning a lot about um, who we are and some of that process of learning about ourselves may also be a bit scary um, I know in, in the work that we do at my organization at Cornerstone, um, we've been working with a lot of people who are struggling quite a bit right now in these changed circumstances with issues of anxiety, of fear, of questioning the future, of not being sure what's going to happen next. Um, and I think the topic of, of tonight's talk, uh, disconnecting in order to reconnect, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's also paradoxical in a certain way, um, because a lot of times when we think about disconnecting, Connecting. The idea is, oh, disconnect from your devices. You know, for those of us who have children, we may say, you know, you're, you're on your devices for too long, disconnect. We might disconnect the Wi-Fi. We might tell our spouses, you know, um, disconnect so that we can connect. But really, I think the 
topic of disconnecting during these particular times as we you know struggle through these uncharted waters trying to understand um, what is happening with COVID-19 um, listening to the heartache and the difficulties that so many people are going through physically mentally emotionally financially it's a different type of disconnecting that we want to do as we enter into the blessed days of Ramadan inshallah and rather than disconnecting maybe the term that we want to use is more akin to detaching being able to really detach ourselves from that sense of normal that we may have experienced in the past that becomes almost second nature to us and we no longer begin to dig deep or think um, a little bit more intrinsically about what we're all about about what this world is about about why we're here about how we worship our creator you know, I think for um, year after year after year, you know, we would attend the ICNA program, we would attend the convention, we would, you know, as, as speakers, as attendees, as families, um, attend lectures, speak about topics. Um, and a lot of times we would address so many of the social ills that we saw around us. So we might have, you know, lectures and topics about the issues and the ills that we see with social media. We might have topics about, you know, families disintegrating and what was causing the break down among many family members. Um, we might have topics about addictions, about pornography, about drugs, about uh, marijuana, about issues of sexuality and identity. And these are all incredibly relevant and incredibly important topics, but it really takes a pandemic. It takes a complete change in our lives for us to be able to step back and get that 30,000 foot view that I think many of us may be experiencing right now. You know, subhanAllah, right before um, the restrictions uh, kind of began hitting in terms of travel and um, we started to see kind of the pictures in uh, in, in Saudi of Mecca and, and Medina kind of being completely empty, right before that period of time, subhanAllah, in the month of January, um, you know, one of my most uh, uh, ardent du'as had been answered where for over 17 years, you know, every year, um, my, my organization, Cornerstone, we would work with different groups, different masajid, we would plan an Umrah trip, and every year, I wouldn't be able to go. Every year, something would happen, and it wouldn't be my nasib, it wouldn't be written for me. And subhanAllah, this past January, right before things kind of um, really hit uh, all of us quite hard, um, it was subhanAllah something that truly was miraculous. Um, the day before uh, the group was heading out to Umrah, um, I received uh, a message that I was supposed to go out with them, even though certain circumstances had occurred, I wasn't supposed to go out. And literally in a matter of you know a few hours, I suddenly had my visa, my tickets, um, everything, and, and I had gone out with the group for the Umrah. Um, and subhanAllah, you know, on that Umrah, there was something that was very different that, that hit me, um, despite having gone before. Um, it was the opportunity to actually climb up Jabal Nur and the opportunity to visit Ghar Hira. Because in the past, you know, again, it was it had been 17 years before that, um, I, I wasn't able to do that. And so subhanAllah, early in the morning, we had gone with the group and we had climbed, you know, stair after stair after stair. And if you've ever had that that honor of visiting Jabal Nur, of, of praying the two rak'ahs in, in Ghar Hira, you truly begin to feel, you know, that walking in the footsteps of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And, you know, as we all climbed and, you know, in, in the heat and we're getting tired, you know, I just kept thinking of how the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would climb this mountain before there were even concrete stairs, when they were just rocks and he would climb and he would climb. And when you reach the pinnacle of that mountain and when you come close to Ghar Hira and you look out, what do you see? And you stand there and you envision how the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood there. And what you see below you, what you see, you know, for miles as far as the eye can stretch is Mecca. And in that moment, you know, I, I realized, subhanAllah, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was Al-Ameen. 
He was the trustworthy one. And he looked around him and in that time in Jahiliya, and he saw so many of those social ills. He saw female infanticide happening everywhere. He saw corruption. He saw abuse. He saw mistreatment of women. He saw, you know, a, a, a lack of compassion. He saw cheating and lying. So many social ills, just like year after year after year, you know, in those ICNA conventions, we stand up and we talk about the social ills that surround us. But the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took it upon himself to do what? To withdraw a little bit away from those social ills, to climb up this mountain, Jabal Nur, to sit in Ghar Hira, to sit in what? To sit in isolation. To isolate himself from all that was around him. To be able to get that 30,000 foot view that we were talking about. To be able to connect with Allah Azza wa Jal. To reflect upon what was happening in the world and to ask, why is this happening and what can I do about it? And subhanAllah, for many of us in our homes right now, you know, it, it may not feel like we have the time to have that deep self-reflection. It may not feel like we have the, the bandwidth, the, the mind space to be able to self-reflect because it's hard. It's different. We're not used to stopping and breathing. You know, a lot of times when we talk about struggling with anxiety, when we talk about overcoming fears, we talk about the importance of breathing, of just taking that deep breath. And I feel like, you know, what we're experiencing right now is Allah Azza wa Jal giving us an opportunity to breathe, giving us an opportunity to really hit pause and to hit pause on lives that have been described. You know, we've all probably seen the articles in the New York Times and, you know, the different um, uh, bits of information that come out about how we're really plagued in this generation, in this time with the disease of busyness, of I'm so busy, you know, how are you? Good, but so busy. Or what, what are you doing? Oh, things are so busy. You know, and that's constantly on our tongue. And yet here, you know, even if it's not voluntarily that we're self-isolating, it's Allah Azza wa Jal giving us that opportunity. And it's an opportunity because it really is putting pause on a lot of our lives. And when the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sat reflecting, looking out and recognizing there are so many social ills during that period of Jahiliyyah in his beloved Mecca. He knew that he wanted change. And it wasn't just an external change that occurred, but it was the beautiful revelation that was brought down to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that affected an internal stage for the entire Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So a change that affects us on the inside so that we may affect change on the outside and this is the beauty of of trying to reconnect of being able to recognize what we should be disconnecting from because now more than ever we're probably using our devices to connect we're probably turning to the wi-fi as a connection but in the process of using our devices, connecting through lectures to listening to different programs that are on right now, thinking about what we can disconnect our heart from, thinking about what we can detach our heart from. When Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us in the Quran that we will be tested, we are reminded that we will be tested with something of fear, we will be tested with something of hunger, we will be tested with a loss, a loss of life, a loss of wealth, a loss of goods. We're seeing all of these tests now. now may Allah Azza wa Jal grant rahma and the highest of Jannah for all those who have passed away during these difficult times. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant sabr for all those who have lost family members. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant shifa for all those who are struggling right now and who need our dua and need that, that mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that is all around us and all encompassing in order to get through and recover from this difficult disease at this point. But in the process of recognizing that we're being tested, and we're being tested with that fear, that anxiety. We're being tested with that loss. We're being tested in many ways, in many situations with hunger. Those of us who are not sure where the next paycheck is going to come from. Those of us who are, are, are struggling in order to make ends meet. 
These are all tests that have been promised to us. But Allah Azza wa Jal also reminds us in that ayah that there are glad tidings that are given to those who are patient. That with that patience that we have, that is, is, is the response that we need to give in terms of what we are currently experiencing. So as we enter into the blessed days of Ramadan, there is a part of us that may be lamenting. There is a part of us that may be texting our friends or sending messages and saying, oh, Ramadan is not going to be the same. I can't believe I'm not going to see anyone. We're not going to have our iftar parties. But this is the time where we also want to ask ourselves, well, what can I do? What can I do differently in this you know, type of self-isolation that maybe I didn't ask for? but that Allah Azza wa Jal knows I need. Because again, when we're tested by Allah Azza wa Jal, we're tested with the tests that we need, the tests that are specifically tailored to us. They're not always the tests that we want. So asking ourselves, what can I do with this test that I currently have? Again, when we look at the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, what did he see around him? You know, he saw corruption. He saw his own father creating idols. He saw a town that was beloved to him with people in it that he knew were going down the wrong path. And it was in isolation and self-reflection when he would ask questions, you know, who is my Lord? That he found the answers that he was seeking. When the youth in Surah Al-Kahf that we read every week, when they saw the corruption in their town, it was again an isolation in the cave that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to them. And there was so much protection in that isolation, subhanAllah, that when the sun would hit from the entrance of the cave and they slept, Allah Azza wa Jal would turn them away so that the sun would not burn them. So even protection from the elements in that way. So as we sit in our homes, as you know, some of us in, in certain parts of the world are experiencing complete lockdowns right now. Some of us are experiencing curfews. Some of us are experiencing you know, complete shutdowns of businesses. Um, in the New York, New Jersey area where I'm from, um, we're seeing a complete change to our lifestyles. And yet again, knowing that you know, Allah Azza wa Jal reminds us that in the that with every difficulty there is ease, knowing that there is protection for us, not just physical protection, but there is also emotional protection that we are currently experiencing. There is spiritual protection that we're experiencing, but it's up to us to take those steps to be able to attach our heart or reattach our heart to that which is most pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal and detach it from that which pulls us away from pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. Now I know for many of us, oh, this may be a period of time where some of our difficulties that we were experiencing prior to the pandemic, prior to all of these changes in our lifestyles, that these difficulties may intensify. For those of us who are living in homes where there is strife and there is relationship difficulty, for those of us who may be arguing with our spouses, for those of us that we are in situations where domestically we don't feel safe, I know that this isn't easy. And for those of us who may wake up in the morning and open up our news feeds and after checking first, you know, what is the death count today? Or, and then checking what's happening in another country and then going into our news feeds and looking at maybe, you know, moms who are doing these great projects with their kids and families that are baking together and, you know, different experiences. We may be undergoing a whole range of our own emotions. Don't invalidate the emotions that you feel. If you are feeling sad now, understand that this is not something that we have to hide or deny. We are grieving. We are grieving essentially the loss that Allah Azza wa Jal tells us we will experience in this dunya. We are grieving the loss of our lifestyles. We are grieving the loss of our independence in many ways. We're grieving the loss of security. That grief is very real. And being able to walk ourselves through the stages of grief is also an important part of the process of recovery. But know that even the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam experienced grief and sadness. He experienced Aam al Huzn, the year of sadness. He experienced a period of time that was very difficult for him when he lost his beloved Khadija radiallahu anha and, the, and his uncle. And subhanAllah, during that Aam al Huzn, during that sadness, there was more sadness that, that came upon him. Sadness that was linked to entering the town of Ta'if and being rejected. 
And subhanAllah, you know, when we think of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we look at this period of time in his life, we also recognize that some of the experiences we're having, not being able to hug our parents maybe, not being able to visit the elderly, not being able to reach out in Ramadan, missing out on that physical connection as well as the emotional connection. We go back to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we see that when he experienced his first moments of fear when the revelation first came to him, when Jibreel alayhi salam commanded him, Iqra, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went first to Khadija radiallahu anha. And what was the connection that they had? It was first a connection of touch. Because it was in the lap of Khadija radiallahu anha that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shivered and said, cover me, cover me. So when we're grieving, when we're mourning our connections, a big part of that grief and mourning is that we are disconnected even from the touch of our loved ones in many certain situations. And we see that the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after this period of sadness, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was gifted with something that was also gifted to his ummah, to generation upon generation upon generation of believers. And it was the gift of Al-Isra al miraj when we received the commandment of our salah. And so it, it's in that salah, in that five times a day, that Allah Azza wa Jal turns us back to him, that even though we may be longing for the companionship, the, the regularity maybe of our previous lives, there is something that Allah Azza wa Jal has given us in which we can reflect, in which we can connect, in which we can follow in the footsteps of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we know that Allah Azza wa Jal promises us that even within this difficult time, that this too shall pass, that even this difficulty, even if we can't put a time on it, if we can't say it's definitely going to end by June, it's definitely going to end by August, it's, we don't know. We don't know when the hardship will end, but we know that it will end because we know that the tests of this dunya are temporary. This entire dunya is temporary. And that if we were to take our finger and dip it into the ocean, the drop on our fingertip would be like this dunya and the entire ocean would be our akhra. And so as we're trying to work through what we're experiencing today and, and during this time, I think there's just a, a few points that if we can keep them in our mind and maybe share them with others, it might help us through this, especially as we enter the days of Ramadan. So first of all, thinking about the concept of disconnecting and that disconnecting does not always mean disconnecting from the internet because for many of us right now, it's something that is, is, is helpful. It's connecting us with others but also being able to detach, also being able to step away. Our children, for many of us, are going through online classes. They're turning to their devices. Take that time where you dedicate, you know, a plug-in time. Let's say it's, it's you know, 8 p.m. every evening or 9 p.m. every evening where every member of the family, that's mother, father, children, grandparents, in-laws, whoever is in the household, disconnects completely. And use that disconnection time to reconnect with the family, to play a game, to tell a story, to simply talk with each other. And if you are thinking to yourself, well, I live alone, I'm completely by myself, then disconnect in that time. And again, that's a beautiful moment to reconnect with your Lord, with your creator. And as a family, reconnecting as well. But also don't give yourself that, that extra layer of, of guilt, of thinking, you know, I should have been cleaning the house. I should have been, you know, uh, completing this and this and this at work. I should have been doing a million other things. Look what this mom posted on Instagram and look what this parent did on Facebook and, you know, and I'm not productive. Give yourself time again to grieve and to empathize with yourself, to have that self-compassion because Allah Azza wa Jal is more merciful upon us than ourselves at times. And so we know that during this period of time, there is nothing normal about our situation. And so we're not necessarily just working from home, but for many of us, it is working from home, balancing emotions, stressing it out, stressing out about the future, caring for children, living in dynamics and in a space where it can be really difficult to uh, communicate because maybe we haven't fixed the communication between us and the family. So disconnect from the devices, but also don't give yourself such a hard time in terms of what you should be accomplishing during this time. Do what you can. Another aspect, reconnect 
through that reflection, reconnect with that spiritual connection to Allah Azza wa Jal, allowing the touching of our head to our forehead to the ground to be like a grounding experience, a mindfulness exercise that brings us back to the moment, to the purpose of our creation, to who we are and what we're about and why we're here. Connect to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Walk in his footsteps as he walked up Jabal Nur. Walk in his footsteps as he entered Ghar Hira. Look at this isolation as an opportunity, as a break from the busyness. Even if it's just a few minutes a day that you're able to step away and to reflect. So number two, so we said number one, we're going to disconnect from devices, but we're also going to understand the importance of connecting with others through the devices. Number two, we're going to try to reconnect with family. And if we're living alone, if we're single, reach out, call someone, connect with someone, but also use that time for that self-reflection. Number three, grounding exercises, allowing our salah to be an exercise of mindfulness that brings us back to a place of calm as much as possible. But also not being so hard on ourselves that if we're not feeling spiritually uplifted now, that we're not fe if we're not feeling a, a connection with our Lord, not to beat ourselves up and think what's wrong with me, but instead to know that maybe in our test, it is that sense of having to try to find that peace, that space of, of, of calm, of rahmah that Allah Azza wa Jal promises to us. And it's going to look different in every household. It's going to look different for every person as we process it. And finally, you know, as we go through this, this journey, yes, we're apart. Yes, there's distance between us. Yes, the whole process of social distancing is new and, and unusual and it's not something we're, we're used to but we're also in this together. And I think there has been probably no other time that I've seen the strength of Ummah Muhammad as I've seen us come together now from programs and projects that are feeding the hungry to you know uh, organizations that are working to, to feed the healthcare workers, from people reaching out and saying, what can I do? How can I help? From checking on our neighbor, you know, we constantly remind each other, Rasul wasta ala sabah jar, which means the, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advise us to care for our seventh neighbor. So finally, we're seeing these types of connections as we stop and breathe. So take that, that sense of strength and that recognition that despite the hardship, despite the difficulty, inshallah, Allah Azza wa Jal is going to bring us through this. And inshallah, we will be stronger for it. We will have a strength of, of faith in, in recognition that even through something as difficult as this, we've been able to get through it. So, you know, one of the, the, the final things that I just wanted to share in the last few minutes that I have is a remembrance of another prophet, alayhi salam, who also went through isolation, who also went through difficulty. You know, we may think of, of the prophet Yusuf, alayhi salam, sitting in, in, in prison and in that period of isolation in prison and in that kind of uh, not being allowed to go out and about, he found more raha, he found more of a sense of peace and tranquility than when he was, you know, in the home of Al-Aziz and struggling against the fitna there. But also thinking of the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam, who again, he saw corruption, he saw people who were not listening, he, who, he was calling them to Islam and, and he was being rejected over and over and over again. And it was in isolation when the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam was in that belly of the whale, in the darkness of the ocean, in the darkness of the night, in that, that darkest part of darkness that we can imagine, that the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam turned to Allah Azza wa Jal, turned to Allah Azza wa Jal and, and was reminding himself, right? reminding himself, La ilaha illa ant. Subhanaka inni kunta min al that oh Allah there is no God but you you are the one and I have been of those who were of the Dhalimin. So recognizing his own part and that's the self-reflection that I think maybe we can each work on in order to reconnect to understand what is it within ourselves that we need to change. Do we need to be more patient with our family members? Do we need to be calmer in the way that we talk? Do we need to detach from certain aspects of the dunya that we've gotten too attached to? Do we need to take a deep breath 
and calm ourselves down and remind ourselves that truly Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who is in control. That true tawakkul means to turn our umur, to turn everything that is in our life over to Allah Azza wa Jal. And so I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal guides us through these difficult times. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal sees us through this and allows us to be strong, the, the strongest version of ourselves in our Iman, in our connection to Him. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to see Ramadan and to truly be able to exercise these elements of reconnection during the blessed month of Ramadan. And I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal heals all those who are sick. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal allows us to once again be together, be one Ummah, and to be able to pray side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and to truly appreciate the beauty of those connections. Jazakumallahu khair. Jazakumallahu khair, Dr. Suzy, for that. Um beautiful talk, very inspiring. Um, I really benefited from the um, point that you said, what, res what resonated with me was when you said to withdraw from societal ills and, um, you know, really step away from those sins that are really weighing us down and to reflect and reconnect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have a positive outlook on all of this. Um, so we, this brings us now to our Q&A section. Um, so we do have one question. If, you, if anyone from the viewers has a question, please type them in the Q&A and we'll try our best to have them answered. So the first one is, um, you mentioned how uncomfortable it can be facing ourselves at this time. Could you share some prompts or practices for quarantine self-reflection? All right, Jazakallah khair. Thank you, sister. I was trying to read your lips before when it was muted, but I couldn't quite get it. So I'm glad you unmuted. Alhamdulillah. All right. Um, so I think that's um, a, a great point. You know, what do we do when we are in that state where we really do have to face ourselves? Again, part of this dunya is is the distractions of this dunya. You know, we know that il dunya lahu, which means it's it's it, it's a, a process of entertainment essentially. And for many of us. We constantly entertain ourselves, meaning we occupy ourselves with things online, with social media, with running from one meeting to another, from one gathering to another, um, because we're almost afraid to face our own innermost self, who we really are and what we're really about. And I think this is, you know, again, one of the most beautiful aspects of, of self-isolation and part of, of the whole journey of Ramadan and, and that spiritual uh, connection is to be able to sit with ourselves. So practices to learn how to be able to work through that and cope with that. First of all, there there's an exercise that we like to kind of work on in, in our intervention sessions through Cornerstone, um, which is known as memory mining. And it's a process of being able to take yourself back to the past and to better understand who you are today because of what you've experienced in the past. Um, Sometimes it can be a difficult journey because the way that Allah Azza wa has created us is that we're resilient, but we're resilient often because we create these little boxes in our minds and things that have happened to us in our past, we may put them in these boxes, seal these boxes off and just shove them away in our mind. And we don't really want to face them until we're forced to face them. And often it's in moments like this when there's such a shift in our life, when something severely changes, that it's like the boxes are ready to open. And this is where we trust Allah Azza wa Jal, that you know, Allah reminds us, that He will never burden a soul with a burden that's greater than that soul can bear. So if that box is in your mind, it's there because Allah Azza wa Jal knows that you are the one that can handle this test. So whatever experiences you've put in those boxes, this might be the time to look through them. This might be the time to go back to those memories, to better understand why do I have difficulty maybe um, committing to completing a task? You know, why am I struggling with graduating from college? Why do I not get along with my siblings? Why do I feel like I can't have a decent conversation with my mother? Why am I constantly getting in and out of haram relationships? This is the time to ask those questions. This is the time to begin to do that soul searching. And it's not an easy journey. So this is also the time where I would say, if you've ever thought about speaking to a therapist, speaking to a counselor, speaking to an interventionist, um, this might be the time to be able to do it. Because again, a lot of times our, our excuse is, I have no time. You know, I'm running around, there's, there's no time. Um, so don't try to do it alone if you find it 
hurts too much, if you find it's difficult. Anxiety is real, depression is real. These are illnesses, these are maladies that need to be taken care of. But use this time to go into those boxes and see who you are, not just who you are, but why you are who you are. Thank you. Um, we do have another question. Um, so a lot of the advice that we're hearing from speakers, you know, um, you also mentioned this is to sit in isolation and talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if this is a practice that we're not used to, like the practice of muraqaba, how do we then, you know, become better at it because it's something very unfamiliar or like we're hesitant. So how is there any tips on how we can be a little better at self-reflectance and make it something that's a bit more habitual and natural? Yeah. So, you know, one of the scholars uh, after the time of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would always have a miswek in his teeth, you know, it constantly biting down on it. And the reason for that was that in order to say something, he had to consciously remove that miswek from his mind and that uh, from his mouth. And that act of consciously removing that miswek would make him pause and think, is this something that's really important for me to say? Is it something that is beneficial or not? And so he spoke very few words because that miswek was in his mouth. And it reminds me quite a bit of, um, you know, I have several friends who got uh, Invisalign, those little teeth things that keep your teeth straight. And I know my understanding is that they're a pain to take off and take on. So a lot of my friends, after they got Invisalign, wound up losing a lot of weight. And it was because they would think about whether or not they wanted to eat something before eating it, because it had to be really worth it for the trouble of taking off the Invisalign. So when we talk about making it natural, the way that our world is currently designed, we've gone far, far away from the process of taskiyat and nafs, of truly sitting with the self and trying to purify the self. Because again, in dunya lahu, that, that entertainment, that constant busyness that the world has sucked us into, it's meant to occupy the mind to keep us far from thinking of faith. So there, it's not necessarily a natural process for many of us. It's not something that comes naturally, but it's something that can be learned. So, you know, for someone who is, is you know, thinking about taking a yoga class, for example, um, I know the first yoga class I ever did, uh, I wound up getting kicked out because I was laughing because it was so hard to sit silently and then, you know, do these certain poses that our, our yoga teacher was trying to teach us. So again, it's, it's going to take almost like a breaking of our own, what we're normally used to. So simple tips to do it. Create a time for it. Again, for many of us, that idea of, of sitting in isolation, we may be running around after children. We may be running around after our siblings. We may be trying to balance online classes with um, you know, working outside of the home as well. There's a lot of things that we may be balancing now and being in a home rather than a dorm or um, create small moments just small moments. It doesn't have to be hours of self-reflection. So waking up a few minutes before Fajr, for example, and using that time to really just, just sit quietly, just think about Allah Azza wa Jal, just reflect upon the beautiful names of the Creator and understanding what they mean and how they apply in your life. Take one name of Allah Azza wa Jal, of the 99 names and reflect upon it each day. That gives you 99 days and inshallah ya Rabb, in 99 days this balat will be lifted and at that point for many of us we would have experienced truly knowing who Allah Azza wa Jal is. Wake up for tahajjud you know, spend just a few minutes. Again, sometimes we're like all or nothing type of people. I either spend hours in self-isolation and reflecting or then forget it, I can't do it. But that's not what Allah Azza wa Jal loves of us. He loves the small, consistent acts that are pleasing to him. So make them small, make them consistent and do what you can, even if it's five minutes a day. Thank you. Um, and our last question or is, um, so you mentioned that um, it's it's okay to grieve and to be sad, um, but what is the proper way to grieve, grieve within like the Islamic guidelines? It's, you know, sometimes we might go overboard, and we don't want to do something that is not acceptable to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So, um, any advice on that? So again, this is another great question. And again, we look to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, as our example. When the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent, he, he felt, you know, uh, uh, some sadness when the revelation had stopped for a bit of time. And this was after a period of time when the revelation had not come to the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The verses that were revealed after that period of time were the verses of Surah Al-Duha. 
And what's beautiful about the verses of Surah Al-Duha is that they're essentially a guide of, of how to grieve and what to do to help us through any type of grief. And in Surah Al-Duha, Allah Azza wa Jal reminds the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by, by swearing by, by the dawn that yes, there is a night, but for every night there is a dawn. By reminding the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and reminding the Ummah of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that, you know, this at this, 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 you know, everything that we've experienced, anything that is difficult, anything that, that he's gone through that causes sadness, there will be relief for it. You know, he's reminded, you know, Alam Najitka Yatim and Fa'awa, did we not find you as an orphan and give you refuge? And then the response following that is that when you see the orphan, give the orphan refuge. When you see the questioner, do not turn the questioner away. When you see an act of service that you can complete, complete the act of service. And the last line, the last line that that uh, of, of the last ayah of those beautiful verses of uh, Surah Al-Duha, we see that it's a reminder to be grateful, to remind us of gratitude, of remembering what Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with. So grieve and recognize that this is hard. It is hard on all of us in different ways, but also know that it is a test from Allah Azza wa Jal that inshallah will purify us, will help us, will draw us nearer to him. And in that process of grieving, look for that which makes you grieve and try to respond again with something that is positive. So again, if you're feeling that sadness as in the verses of the Quran of, you know, a reminder to the Rasul that he was found as an orphan and Allah gave him refuge, the response to it is, is find the orphan and give the orphan refuge. So if you're feeling fear or sadness, call a friend. Talk to a friend. See, maybe they might be afraid. If you're feeling worry about the future, give a donation, give a sadaqah because that will inshallah come back to you. So find what it is that you're grieving about and find almost the opposite of how of, of that grief and act upon it and be grateful because truly that gratitude, that smile, even if we have to fake it, it still brings a peace to the heart and it can enter into the heart inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, I think that is it for our questions. Um, so just one comment for you, Dr. Susie. So alhamdulillah, you've worked for many years with YM and a lot of our members, including myself, we have benefited tremendously from your talks. I just wanted to ask you a simple, like a quick question. How has your experience with YM and Ikna overall, has it been? So alhamdulillah, first of all, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll backtrack a little bit and let you know how I got to know YM. Um, so Ikna was one of the first organizations that I actually um, kind of started speaking at, you know, many years ago. Um, it was prior to speaking at it, I used to attend with my family. Um, my kids loved, you know, the, the jumping uh, gym things and they'd always be excited to go. Um, and through ICNA, I started to learn a little bit more about YM. I think it was that one of the ICNA sessions back in 2011 or 2012 that I went to the first YM session there. Um, and I was honestly, I was, I was amazed at everything that YM does from the neighbor net to the programs that they have, um, the, the fact that there's a, a, a YM for the sisters, a YM for the brothers. Um, I realized, and I hadn't known this before, that in my own community in New Jersey, that there's several different uh, YMs. Um, and to know how these organizations are run by young people for young people is incredible, mashallah. Because, you know, I think when I was, you know, most of the YM leaders age, I probably wasn't in any position to lead, you know. So may Allah Azza wa put a great deal of barakah in the work that you do, um, because you're really, as, as YM leaders, you're helping young people recognize what their future can look like. You're guiding them. You're providing peer mentorship. You're you're giving them what a lot of us, you know, older uh, speakers are not able to because you're you've been there in their generation. You're growing up at the time that they've grown up, and so there's a connection there that is is incredible. So may Allah Azza wa put a great deal of barakah in the work that you do at YM. May Allah Azza wa protect the work of Ikna and all of the organizations under the umbrella of Ikna because you are making real change in so many people's lives and in so many ways. Jazakallah khair and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for continuing to help us and always speak at our conferences and help us with you know with your time and commitment. Um, so with that, is there any last words, Dr. Susie? Do you like to give the viewers? 
Jazakum Allah khair for having me. Um, I, I truly pray that Allah Azza wa Jal sees us all through this difficulty, allows us to be stronger um, in our faith, in our connection, in our sisterhood and our brotherhood. And please, for all the viewers who are out there, if you are going through any difficulty, if this period of time is causing anxiety, stress, depression, if you are in a situation of domestic um, abuse or violence, please reach out don't keep it in you know reach out whether it's to an organization like the one that i am a part of um ikna relief i know has many different organizations um there's the message don't keep it in don't stay quiet this is difficult it's difficult on all of us but we can get through it together inshallah jazakallah khair dr suzy for your um talk may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you um accept from you and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you and your family safe and healthy inshallah so with that this uh, brings us to a close may allah subhan we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, protect us our families and to grant us strength during these difficult times may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all the organizers and the wonderful speakers who took so much time out of their busy schedules to plan and for the speakers to come and share and speak um, and spread the knowledge of the deen may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to you know, implement what we have learned because there is no benefit in learning if you're not actually impl implementing it in your life and making it a part of your life. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the istiqama uh, to be able to do that. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant those that are sick from, you know, COVID-19 a speedy and, you know, complete recovery and all those that are not you know, sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevent them from being sick and keep them healthy. And all those healthcare workers that are working long, arduous hours to protect and to uh, those that are sick, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and um, grant them the best in this world and the next. Um, so with that said, I just wanted to say that this was a, uh, um, this whole program was um, from YM, um, organized by young people. And so uh, please, you know, if you've benefited from anything, uh, we would greatly appreciate your donations. Any, nothing is too small. Uh, so please donate whatever you can. If you can't donate, then at least spread the word. Um, and with with your donations, we, will, we would be able to continue to provide beneficial programming. So check ICNA out, check YM out. Um, look, you know, our social media platforms are shared um, you can, you know, uh, go on any of them or visit our website. Um, also, you can look at ICNA and ICNA Relief, which is doing amazing work for um, during this time. So with that said, um, please stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay indoors. And um, I'd like to conclude. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope you all have a good night. Take care.